<laughs> also, well, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Your Extraordinary Life podcast and YouTube series. Today, I am so excited to be joined by Emily and Jackson Hi. here in Perth, Australia. <laughs> I can't even hear. I know. Uh, <laughs> no idea what so, I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm very far from home. <laughs> yeah. So a little backstory on how we met. Uh, Jackson and Emily were traveling in Bali at the same time that I was traveling with Zia, and Emily reached out and was like, hey, you want to go for an adventure? And I was like, yes. And we all spent an awesome day together in Uluwatu, and and Jackson showed me a picture of Esperance, the beaches down south, and I was like, oh my gosh, immediately, yes, I have to come visit. And that's how I'm here now. Um, I'm so excited to have the two of them on the podcast today. They are amazingly talented photographers, videographers, creatives, and I can't wait for you to hear more of their story. So let's go ahead and dive in. I would love to hear who is Jackson and who is Emily. <laughs> All right, well, I'll start. Um, I... I've been living in Perth my whole life, so I've been here for, yeah, I'm 26 now. Um, I used to live a little bit inland, and now we live by the coast, which I've always loved being by the beach. Um, I got into photography like seven years ago, so I've been, yeah, I started with drone photography and started posting on Instagram, and before I knew it, it was like my full-time job. Um, and back then, drones weren't really a big thing, so I kind of hit the market early. And then, yeah, I've been obsessed ever since. And my main goal with photography was to travel. So um, being able to travel and do photography was like my absolute dream. And now I've like made that dream a reality. So yeah, it's kind of like a little nutshell of me. <laughs> I love it. Amazing. Very cool. Um, wow. Okay. I've been on an absolute journey. Very, very complex and Definitely not. didn't just start with photography and videography. I started with studying conservation biology at university and then went on to work in different parts of the world, remote parts of the world, doing research. And then I decided to come to Australia to do the working holiday visa, just a different kind of experience, life experience, which I think everyone should do because it's life-changing. And um, I met Jackson um, at one of his exhibitions. He was having photography exhibitions with his friends and I knew lots of his friends, but I'd never met him. And I hadn't even heard of him. I don't even know if I was following you or anything. Maybe. Um, <laughs> and I've always been super passionate about wildlife photography, obviously studying conservation. I'm very passionate about protecting um, this beautiful planet. And I'd always had this deep feeling that I should be doing photography and video maybe videography you know, with that. But I always didn't think that it was feasible for a career because I just got told it's a passion, it's just a side thing, a hobby. Um, but when I met Jackson, he basically <laughs> he t I was working in hospitality because I couldn't have another job um, being a backpacker they restrict you quite a lot in Australia and he offered to teach me to edit his wedding videos and I'd been editing my little travel videos here and there but I wasn't really interested in it as a career and I was like okay cool and basically it ended up with me editing more and more of his videos and his friends then wanted me to edit videos and i quit my job <laughs> at the at the restaurant that i was working at and i ended up pursuing a full-time career in travel content creating with jackson and we've been building this amazing like life together here in Perth, doing what we love creating content yeah i guess we started shooting together in like I think it was like April 2022, was it? One. 2021. Okay, that's been a while. Was it? Whoa. I don't no, it was 2022. <laughs> <laughs> we met in November 21, and then we and then started... Um, we did our first trip to Tasmania. Esperance. We, oh, yeah. Our first ever trip was in Esperance. And yeah. oh, <laughs> we don't even remember us did that too many trips. And then uh, I just love... I've always loved being in front of the camera, and he was just like... Run in the dunes. I was like, okay. Yeah, the first, the first shoot we did was in the sand dunes in Esperance, and it was what? like so windy, and like I felt so bad, but I was like, Emily, can you run out there? And she just got absolutely obliterated by sand. Sand <laughs> everywhere. The oh shots looked so cool, and I was like, this girl is up for it. Yeah, <laughs> is that great? <laughs> um, always, yeah. And then we we enjoyed that trip so much, and we, you know, it's, it planted a seed of, um, you know this passion that we both could share together and I think a lot of the time I, I shied away from pursuing photography because 
when you're alone it's a lot harder i think to to get the motivation to get the have the belief that you can do this on your own and having jackson there already doing it and then being surrounded by his friends who were already doing it full time i was like oh actually maybe this could be a thing <laughs> this could might be possible maybe i'll give it a go and then when we went to tasmania i um i basically yeah fell in love with the travel like road trip style photography and videography and then from then on we made the, the decision to pursue that in different countries Europe and Hawaii and New Zealand, New Zealand and I mean it's um, going to be going soon <laughs> to other countries. <laughs> This yeah, is you guys. <laughs> and here is our surprise guest. <laughs> also an amazing amazing creative who will be on the podcast at some point in the future if Thank you, you consent. Should we continue TV? <laughs> So Hugo actually brought us all together. Oh yeah, yeah okay. we so, actually have a lot of mutuals. Yeah, yeah. join in. Yeah, yeah, pop in. Yeah, I, think, I will literally say what happened because I remember um, seeing you two. I was following you already, and I know that obviously you two hadn't met yet. But you'd when I think you had you met. Uh, me and Hugo. Hugo. No, we hadn't met. Hadn't met. Yet. But I we like kind of you started following me after probably connecting with Jax, and then. And then you must—you were shooting in America with Mana, yeah. and then you must have been talking about us or something because then Mana started following me, and I was like, oh, "Why is Mana following me? <laughs> What's going on?" <laughs> and then when we were in—I was in Bali. I was like, "Oh my god! Well, this is a sign. I'm going to reach out." And then the rest is history. And now we're all here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just funny as well. I actually don't know how it started, but Jackson and I met in July for the first time. Yeah. Like Chad always spoke about him, and I think Emily, I just followed for Jackson. Yeah. And then Mana, I, actually, I think that time, I think you guys kind of in the same kind of space. Yeah. And that's how, you know, everything. I don't, I don't know how we end up. It here. just happened. <laughs> Four of us end up here. <laughs> Life is absolutely wild when you're living your passions and you're out there, like the way you're just magnetized towards people who are like also living their passions and on that same frequency and wavelength. Mm, it's yeah. so beautiful. It is, it is, it is beautiful. Um, <laughs> I've started to appreciate and, you know, connect with all these individuals more. I used to be more lone wolf, but now I'm so much happier with people like you. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so, so glad. Oh, yeah. you guys should stay here longer. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like on that wavelength of like passions and finding your passion, because so many people are like trying to find their passions and trying to find what they love. And you guys are like living your passions and living what you love. And so when did that sort of like switch turn on for you that like along your journey of like picking up the drone or along your journey of like being like, oh, you should try to pursue this. Like, what was that moment where you're like, I know this is what I want to do? You go. <laughs> you go um, I luckily it was always, I have always followed my dreams and like my passions with, you know, originally it was conservation and like biology. But I guess um, originally at the start of my starting my career I did really want to do photography but there was that niggling thing and people making comments saying photography is not you know a full-time job you're going to really struggle out there do biology that's that's the good route to do so I did put, like pursue that but it was still my passion but it was probably not what was most suited for me with my personality my you know academic my academic skills <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Where is that? Is it even? It's fine. It was just blowing the wind. <laughs> I'll insert the behind the scenes of Emily, like <laughs> trying to adjust the lighting with this blanket on the tarp. Sunshine. Um, but yeah, I think um, I was constantly pursuing different jobs and different possibilities for me. So I've always had that passion and the, the drive to go and get what I want. But I think the the having the belief in something that is probably t like, telling you that it's not possible that was being around people that were doing it already so i think that's really important if you're not surrounding yourself with people who are you know already doing something like that unless it's something pitting you that, that's not been done before and i'll see not possible but for me that was that was a turning point being surrounded by creatives in perth and you know being with jackson who was super supportive and to have someone like who's got your back who believes in you like whether it be a mentor or a parent or a friend that's i think that's 
phenomenal and life changing. Someone who can see your potential and yeah, pushes you to go. Yes, mm. amazing. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely relate to like surrounding yourself with people because when I first started like doing drone photography and photography, there was not many people that were doing it, but there was still enough to connect with in Perth and like. I'd go out every week and just, like, fly drones with people and just, like, hang out and just, like, surround myself with people that were, like, similar. And I think that kind of, like, motivated me to keep going as well. Um, but I guess the turning point was, like, I bought a drone and I had a GoPro and I was just, like, making, like, fun little travel videos, nothing, like, too serious. Never thought I could turn it into a job or anything like that, but I didn't know what I wanted to do with my career or anything. I had no, like... I was passionate about music and I wanted to, like, pursue music, but... At the same time, it's very hard to pursue music. And like my mum's musician, I say, oh, she works for it. And I was going to try it, but then yeah, I started falling into photography and I posted a few drone videos online and then a marine scientist messaged me one day and he was like, oh, I need some footage of this marina. There's an algae bloom. And the only way to see like the bloom is from using a drone. And I was like, yeah, I can come help out, I guess. I have no idea what's going to lead like where this is going to lead to and then yeah I went with this guy I filmed it he was blown away it was like it really helped with his research and he was just like super grateful and he paid me $150 and I was like I was like I can get paid, I can get paid? This? Yeah. Like, I had no idea if people would like value this and like you know so I quit my job at like a, I was working at a liquor store I quit that like a week later it was pretty quick um, and then I did a drone course to get my license to fly a drone. Um, basically, you just have to learn like like aviation rules and stuff like that. So it doesn't really teach you much about the photography aspects, just like how to fly and like the legalities. And then since then, I haven't like studied or anything like that. I've just looked on YouTube and like watched YouTube and just learned how to take photos and video. Um, but that was like the turning point was earning my first even though it was a small amount of money, I was like, wow, there's potential here. And it took a while to get it off the ground because um, a lot of the money just went back into camera gear. Like, I just keep reinvesting into my business, but, like, it definitely is worth it in the long run. So Yes, so, so yeah. many beautiful snippets there of, like, surrounding yourself with, like, community and mentors and someone who believes in you and also the investments, like, the mm. investments of time and learning and, yeah. like, the energy of being around people or, who are doing that as well. Exactly. So to back Jackson's point up, um, you know, this space is relatively new. It's, I, I, wouldn't, I would say even 2016, 17, 18, it's a period where nobody is doing it. If, if I tell people to become, yeah, that I'm going to be a, become a lab, I don't know how you label yourself, but content creator and filmmaker, photographer. Back then, I, if you tell like nine out of ten people, they will tell you you don't you don't you don't going to succeed. Yeah. And versus now, I think the table has turned around. Yeah. Yeah. But 100%. I remember I kind of went through the same um, path that Jackson went through. You know, like back then, I was like, yeah you're going to, you know, work too hard and, you know, not going to get paid. And I was kind of like, you know, have all these thoughts around. Mm. And, you know, the only only thing that actually kept me going, it's belief yourself. Mm. Mm. Oh, and, yes. And, yeah, it's funny enough, I pick, pick up a drone for That was like my first entry into video or something. Yours was a drone as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've oh, yeah. Um, I mean, the yeah. year that I met you, like six months before, yeah. that's when I bought my first mini and I was making my own travel videos yeah, like, in Australia. Wow. Yeah. And what was it about the drone that like drew all of you to it? I think for me, it was just seeing a new perspective of the world. Ooh. Like I just wanted to, it's like the closest thing you can get to flying without actually flying. And you can like, you'll be in a cool place, but then you can just put yourself in the air and see it from a new perspective and like get really artistic angles but then also just like feel like you can get a different experience of the location you're in and I think that's what caught my attention first. Wow that's so cool. Yeah. I think yeah for me it was like um the fact that I could never I didn't have a photographer or videographer with me at the time. <laughs> Thank you now I do. <laughs> and I just I always wanted to shoot like myself in these incredible places like I wanted to show because it's it's not the same when you don't have a subject and I was traveling solo for three months um out in the desert in Australia and I yeah I thought well what better way to be able to capture 
you know these memories for myself and also to show show my family and friends um and then when i posted my first video online everyone was like oh my god that's amazing and i was like hmm, maybe i should do this more yeah. and when i met Jax, so i was like okay well the universe is literally telling me that i should really do this <laughs> so yeah uh it's like the closest friend to freedom, you know, when flying drone, which is like, I don't know, it's a feeling that, because I came from, you know, using iPhone, GoPro, and, you know, cameras, and drones just like shows you an angle that I've never seen before where I live. So it's like, yeah. really new to me. And I think from there, I think my first location to fly drone was actually in Cape Town, and that place Ooh. actually. I tell a lot of people that made me who I am. Wow. Really? I, yeah. I want to go so bad. I'm putting yeah. it out there. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Very yeah. cool. But, and so, oh, yes. Sorry. No, no, I was going to say, probably if we do another podcast, yeah. I'll go in deep. Oh, yeah. It's about living. Oh, yes. Yeah, there's there's so much. I, like... <laughs> I love how I just like crash it and actually. But... <laughs> oh, just... Yeah, I bet he goes. <laughs> <laughs> and so a lot of people see on social media it's like it's literally a highlight reel you're posting your most beautiful art your most beautiful work like a lot of people see it and they're like wow that must be such a dream and also a lot of people that just call you lucky like you're so lucky you're so like blessed to be able to live this life and, and like pursue your passions but there are so many challenges that come alongside it <laughs> <laughs> there's so many challenges that come alongside it as well what have been mm. some of the most difficult parts of this journey for you guys of pursuing your passions um i think some of the first things that come to mind is not having a stability like mm. coming out of like having a stable job where you get a certain amount of income regularly and you're just like guaranteed that some months you'll get like nothing and you have like you don't know when your next job is going to come and you can try you can reach out but sometimes you don't hear back from people and it's like not knowing when you're going to get your next paycheck it's like mm. it can be kind of daunting but you just have to get used to that and just like trust that it will come and there's been so many times where like i've been like oh no, i need to get like a proper job like but i'm so glad that i just stuck to this and like it all works out in the end um and i guess another thing is it's like a 24 7 job as well like we're constantly having to work even on the weekends like even when it's night time even when traveling and it's like an amazing beautiful place that we're in we're like 24 7 we're doing sunrise to sunset shooting and then driving editing like emailing there's it doesn't stop any day so and yeah. we're not just like colleagues we're also in relationships and then having to manage that is incredibly difficult like people have problems in their relationship just when they see each other a, little, a few times a week we're you know 24 7 having to manage our you know finances our home our you know future and then on top of that there's the pressures of you know creating content all the time you know sometimes for example recently we went to new zealand and i had been dreaming i'm sure jackson as well of going there for years and years and years and the first day i get there all i'm doing is thinking about what i need to shoot and obviously i'm so lucky to be there but i want to experience it i want to be present but i'm thinking about what i'm wearing what i what time you know waking up at sunrise sunset being like smiling all the time and actually i just want to be sat there with my partner you know enjoy the sunset and we of course we still do that but it's just having to distinguish and put those boundaries between a holiday and work and the problem is that our work is our passion so it doesn't feel like work so even when we're on holiday we want to capture it it's a passion of ours and to share that together it's still incredibly difficult and it puts that extra layer of pressure on a, on a relationship um that people wouldn't see you know behind instagram um, online so it's and having to manage yeah of course and on top of that you know jackson's been doing this six seven years I've been doing this, you know, under two years. And the first, you know, when you start, is the hardest time. And there's so many times where I was saying, I would say to Jackson, I give up. I'm not doing this. It's not for me. I'm going to go back into normal life. And I literally, even after losing all my camera gear, my my passport, and um, and I, we were literally in Paris, and I said to him, I'm done. Like, I'm, I quit. That was um, a year and a half ago. Yeah. And, and I was like, no, no not quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, he was like, yeah, and, not letting you. yeah, and I'm so thankful for that because I can imagine, especially if you're doing this on your own, the pressures of 
that, you know, having to put, pick yourself back up every time on your own is massive. And you are on your own. You're not in an office environment where if you have a bad day or, you know, work goes wrong, you've got a whole team behind you supporting you saying, like, oh, it's OK, you know, or HR department. <laughs> if you've been treated badly, you know, that you can go to. Like, it's just you. So it's it's really important to be able to have a supportive group and network with you. Yeah, partner. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there are so many sacrifices that come alongside it that people don't realize. And it's not for the faint heart in those moments when things aren't stable month by month. And you're like, oh, man, I'm not sure. And and what is it exactly that keeps you going in those times? Like, what kept you going? Like, you had mm. Jackson be like, no, I'm not going to let you quit. <laughs> like, when you reach those points of like, almost like, oh, how am I going to quit? Oh, this is not working. Like, what kept you going? I think... Like I just have such a strong passion for travel and oh, wow. for capturing different locations. And I just, I look back at all the things that I've done and I'm, I just know that there's so much more potential and so much more that I will experience. And I think that's what keeps me going. Even when it gets tough, I'm like, I just get so inspired by watching other people's content. Like if I feel really uninspired or really like down, I'll go on YouTube and I'll look up like other travel videos and like try find new destinations, like really cool, like, videographers and all that sort of thing. Book of Flights uh, in New Zealand. It's like last minute Book of Flights. <laughs> oh, it out. <laughs> like, yeah, when, yeah, that was like one big thing recently. We were feeling like stressed and uninspired and like we went it, through, life was hectic. Yeah, yeah we went like, through the visa application for me yeah. to stay in Australia and that was honestly the most exhausting draining thing that we had to go through, you know, right, I don't know if anyone knows about the visa process here, but it's it's not easy. You literally have to give all your like WhatsApp messages and your uh, like pictures and and receipts and uh, you going out for dinner together for the past year and wow. have you know joint bank account and all of this stuff and it's just and the pressure to and it's really expensive. You know, it's about almost ten thousand dollars to to me to maybe be able to stay. Um, and yeah, then to have that and be. Um, motivated to shoot and, and share and be creative like, yeah. life gets in the way of creativity but i knew that like when we were like stressed in that yeah. moment i was like i'm just gonna book a trip to new zealand because yeah. i just needed to travel i just needed to get on the road and like once we're on the road and like shooting even though it can be stressful on the road it's what we love doing and like mm. we shoot something amazing and then we're just like yeah this is worth it like when we yes. when we look back on the footage and like you can see the memories through the mm. videos it's just like it's a good feeling yes. yeah it's like that passion is yeah. driving you yeah we bounce off each other so much as well and have all these different ideas and get it, like one, one of us will get excited for about an idea and then we're like oh yeah okay and then yeah. you know share that and it's it's really yeah. amazing that keeps us motivated I think also um, well for me that it was the the fact that now I have this I have built this life where I'm working and I have freedom it's not I'm not doing the nine to five I'm not constra- I don't have those constraints once you've had a taste of that I think it's pretty impossible to go back um, freedom is like the most amazing thing that you can get in in like work and life balance is like priceless mm. so for me when I went I got down that low and I was ready to quit I just remembered I was like what do you want in your life? Well, it's, it's to be able to travel the world and be able to get paid for it. And that, that was it. It was as simple as that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah. I think over the years, I, I had opportunities, you know, f- like Jackson said, like, you know, what a full-time job. Uh, I got to a point where CNN reached out to me I had to turn down because mm. I kept mm. believe that I can do it. Mm. I started a company, worked with a lot of, you know, good corporate clients. And last year, I just decided to drop everything mm. and continue where I started. So, yeah, like in this path, like, you know, if you're on for the money, <laughs> you're in the wrong path. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, uh, if you're really in for, you know, passion and you know, like satisfaction, that's, that's the career. Yeah. yeah. And what's so cool too, though, is that like that passion can lead to, there's like such an unlimited potential of money mm. in it as well. Yeah. But the money can't be the driving force in it. It yes. can't be the driving like, that's force. That's the thing I think yeah. a lot of people try to get into the creative world because they're like, oh, easy, lucky, like travel, get paid. But like you really, like all those sacrifices all the time, all the energy, all the roadblocks, like that's where that passion, that heart, like, drives yeah. each of us to yeah. keep going 
which yeah. is so cool. Like, it's, you know, money at some point, like, it will become, I won't say irrelevant, but it's not important. You just, you start to think what is aligned with you and what you want to give back to the world, you know, something a bit more meaningful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be great. So, yeah, I think that's that's something that I realized kind of like recently in, in my career. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I said, I, I realized earlier, I said, um, all that matters was to be paid to travel and travel. <laughs> it's not, it's a lot deeper than that. And yeah. Has, and yeah. obviously, there's everyone, every human wants to make a difference, right? I mean, most, most humans yeah. do. And I think having that satisfaction through your work and being able to see the impact that you make and yeah. connecting with all different people all around the world is the most, like, wholesome thing ever. <laughs> it makes you feel so connected and like, and what you share is on sustainable and ecotourism yeah. as well, which is so beautiful. Yeah, it's like we can travel and make a difference in yeah. a positive way. We don't have to be mindlessly traveling and consuming and just mm. just go on your holiday and go on the beach that the locals can't even access, you know, things like that. Or um, not look at your calm footprint and staying in huge hotels that don't monitor their waste and things like that. Like you can actually make small differences and make an impact. And for me, I'm super passionate about that because... If everyone just saw the world the way that I do, it'd be a great place. <laughs> oh, well. Just saying. <laughs> so let's talk Australia, Western Australia, which is the physical location we're in right now. So you're born and raised here in Perth, in Western Australia, and you found your way here in the last couple of years. And you're also from Australia. Yeah, from Australian, but mm-hmm. technically I'm but- kind of like hybrid. Uh, yeah. I used to grow up here in East Coast, but it's only just recent years I started coming to the West Coast. Mm, and yeah. it's been a pretty game changer. It makes me, sorry to say that, East Coaster, but I don't want to go back to the East Coast after. Ooh. <laughs> West Ooh. is best. Yeah, so how, how, is it? how is the West Coast of Australia for you guys? I mean, I've always lived here and I've always loved it. Mm. Um, there's obviously the beaches here are absolutely incredible. Um, after traveling the world, though, I do realize that it is very limited with, there's no, not really any mountains or anything like that here, but the coastline and the ocean is just absolutely incredible, and the community here in Perth is amazing. Uh, even though we're very isolated uh, here in Perth, we're the most isolated city in the whole world. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> I the places, down the Google Maps, yeah, and I'm like, the, whoa. <laughs> the closest place is Bali. It's wow. quite close in Melbourne. Oh like, that's gosh. crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Actually. So, yeah, Bali's like a regular place that we go to. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense now. Oh, yeah, so many Australians yeah. in Bali. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, no, I love Perth. I've been here, like, on and off for four years. I flew in here first, 20, January 2020, just before COVID. Spent a month here and then flew over to the East Coast. And I'd never really experienced living in the East Coast out of co- outside of COVID. And I loved the East Coast for the, like, well, Queensland, rainforest, um, the hinterlands, hiking and waterfalls and then beautiful point breaks, surfing. And it's honestly stunning. Um, but yeah, what made me fall in love with Perth is the community. Uh, there was an amazing community here and I'd never felt so like, at one and like in the, in, like, no, sorry, I've never felt like I belonged so much in a place um being from england and france i'm half french half english i think i always was in limbo i didn't know which one i was really supposed to be in and then coming here just felt yeah really i just felt at peace (laughs) and then yeah connecting to like-minded people um but yeah i think the the thing i struggle the most with is probably the disconnect with different cultures and the um i like europe because you've got so many cultures all around and it's so much influence and diversity and that's something that I do find difficult with Perth um but I think that we we're in a we've just moved recently to a place that's got a lot more diversity and I think it's just about going out there and meeting those people we just haven't met as many like international people (coughs) a lot of backpackers around yeah, there is. And uh, I'd love to reconnect as well with people from different places. I think it's really important to surround yourself yeah. with different nationalities and um, it brings a lot of different perspectives to the world. Definitely. That's very true. Amazing. 
<laughs> and the question that sort of revolves around the whole theme of the podcast, your extraordinary life, is that it looks different for every single person. For one person, it's hiking a mountain. For one person, it's traveling to every country in the world. What does your extraordinary life look like for each of you guys? <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, together, we just want to travel the world and promote sustainable travel i think we both have that passion and we both want to make sure that we're not just promoting thoughtless travels and adventures so living our extraordinary lives it looks like traveling together pursuing both our own passions with you know jackson's drone photography mine more so with you know the um eco travel aspect um but yeah i think i think moving like more towards into uh doing more like documentary style more important videography like we both have um that talent to create videos and we love traveling and we love sustainability and like promoting that so like to be able to travel and create like more meaningful documentaries rather than like short form videos like mm. we're doing now i think that's probably like the goal for us um but yeah as long as we're traveling and having a good time and doing it ethically and promoting sustainability yeah. i think that's probably our dream. There's a lot of places we want to visit. Yeah. A lot of places in this world. Where's the top of the list? I don't know. Me? <laughs> I don't even know. There's too many places. Yeah. Like French Polynesia. Oh. Uh, swimming with the whales. Yeah. Yeah. Iceland. Uh, Africa. Wow. Good. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Very cool, you guys. Well, I love following your adventures. I love that we've met in this like magical, crazy way. Yeah. And I can't wait to continue to follow your journeys and see your sustainability tourism focused documentary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, on that note, like it's fluid. Like we don't know where life is going to take. Yeah. Us, so, like, we're of just happy with whatever. That's happens. the magic and, of it. Yeah. 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 Not- and where can everyone follow along on your journeys? Uh, Jackson underscore underscore Roberts and Emily underscore Red <laughs> Thank you guys so much. So Thank grateful you. for you and this amazing week seeing Thank Esperance. You. <laughs> <laughs> That's her voice and I've had enough. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What'd Cut. you say?